Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalever. And right now, we are looking at the discontent at the Pentagon, as well as the conclusion of the battle for Russia. But, if you'd like to read about the conclusion for the battle of Russia, please go right ahead. This happens whenever the final victor is chosen for the, well, one of the Russian unifiers. So, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Okay, but discontent at the Pentagon. Secretary of Defense John Stennis harumphed. Facing the Secretary of the Army, the Army Chief of Staff, in his spacious office in the Pentagon's E-Ring. This again, your concerns were noted in the minutes, which were sent to the White House when the defense review was finalized. We're looking at training cancellations, officer retirements, deactivating units. Do you know what this will do to morale and readiness? The Army Chief of Staff was barely hiding his anger. Our men from South Africa deserve better than this. It'll be rough for the Army, but we're all going to have to pull all of our weight. Uh, Stan has sympathized that the Army was losing sight of the bigger picture. It was an old line, and the two Army leaders exchanged glances. The Secretary coughed nervously. Does that come directly from the President? A tense silence followed. What exactly are you implying, Stennis finally said. The Secretary stared Stennis down. We wanted to raise a formal objection directly to the President. Stennis seized as he pulled his oh, sexagenarian frame out of his chair. If they want to go over his head, he would and make it easy for them. Well, you have to call the Chief of Staff Harlow in the White House, though I'm sure he'll wonder why you're not coming through me or with me, and I'll tell him the same thing I told you to, Stenesis. Now, get out. Follow the chain of command, which we're trying to finish up right now. Big Pharma. And which? We are still trying to be as, I would say, centrist as possible, even though we'll see how far we can get with this plan with a letter. Glenn. The board, the board signed off on the President's tit-for-tat. Company will fund the deductible and premium discount as soon as the paperwork's filed on your own. I don't know what carrots you dangled in front of his face, but Bossman wants him soon. Ever seen yourself drool over the big, muscly surfer dude we met in Cali? Me neither, but the way he stared at my empty space in his office e earlier sure fits how I imagined it would look. Just just some food for thought. Uh, that one's, that's one favor you owe me now. Ray will stop by the usual joint about feel like crashing in, Crow. P.S. Tin Boy said hi. It's a wor small world, don't you think? Slightly reduced costs? Nice. So we did that with Pharma. We can get involved in Iran and the Middle East, but that doesn't really interest me right now. And we did go down the, kind of the centrist way down here. We're going down both sides, but it is 71, so I wonder how far we can go. And we can do, yeah, there's more Iran over there as well. Cool. Uh, the right to unionize our working mothers. Ooh, I kind of want to do that for poverty. While the right of women to maternity leave has been mostly secure, working mothers, especially those with no husbands to rely upon, still face great struggles. Having a child is no cheap affair, and many mothers are forced into the workforce to sustain their families, as young, unschooled children are the very important developmental stage of their lives. Having poor familial connections is devastating. To ensure the health of our working mothers, as well as the future generation of Americans they are raising, President Margaret Chase Smith has proposed greatly, greatly lessening the financial strain that children place upon their parents. This would be achieved through extreme cuts to tax upon, taxes upon single mothers, work full-time, increasing Social Security with less extreme benefits, given a low-income families in which both parents are employed. Expenses will rise a little bit, and they will be sure to vote for market next election season, which hopefully we get to 1976, no guarantee, but hopefully we get there. Now, we really wanted to. We could cut down the debt a whole bunch, potentially, and by cut down the construction, I mean to have a better deficit, but I'd rather get through the civvies currently that we're producing and then maybe cut it down. I think that'd probably be a better approach. But we do have a couple comments to go through. Um, let's get some of this first done. It's 71. We can do that one. Doesn't really matter. Technology, like I said in the last episode, really doesn't matter too much. Hey, look. Republicans? No. No, thanks. Democrats? No, of course. Uh, let's see. But right now, pretty much everyone's pleased except for the fascist wing, which is whatever. But a couple comments. Um, actually, I did want to say... I think we're trying a new mod here. Let's see if we can do it like this. Can we do it like this? Uh, we're currently in this map mode. I tried to put install or, you know, have a new mod called TNO Improved City Lights. But I'm not sure if they're really working right now. Let's see if we can do anything here. Do this? Oh. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyways, other mods go. Someone says we should go as a dictator as Margaret Chase Smith. I don't think we can do that with this mod. Also, I did send, try to send volunteers to Iran, but no one wants me to send volunteers, which is kind of disappointing, but... Um, yeah, we can't go dictators, Margaret J. Smith, even though it says authoritarian dictatorship, or, or authoritarian de democracy, I mean. This says authoritarian democracy, we cannot become a dictator, which is what it is, so... <clears throat> it is what it is. Ask the industrialists, don't promise too much, don't promise too little. Founding of OSHA, a quiet revolution. I like the better academic base, but it won't sit well with the traditionals of the party, so we don't want to piss them off. Maybe we'll go back over here next, perhaps. Lessons from Midway. Uh, Subsidies, Newport News. Anything else? Sea, land, and air. Oh, what is that? More special forces capacity multiplier. Ready the boomers. Our spacious skies. Oh, nuclear stockpile. 
Let's do our spacious skies. Air power missile technology represents the cutting edge of America's defense, providing the means to reach out and strike our enemies from afar, both conventionally and with nuclear weapons. The continuing modernization of the Air Force's aircraft and missile in inventories is critical to ensuring that America sleeps soundly comfortable in the knowledge that its men in uniform are ever vigilant and watching our skies and capable of delivering swift vengeance to carry anyone that dares cross America. Cool. And how's the cost doing right now? Eh, it's slightly better than before. But still not great. One, two, three, four, and a half. Not bad. Let's go read the next one, which we're going to go back to the left side here, and probably do medical scholarships. Yeah, we'll definitely do that one. Academic base will rapidly rise. Pursuing a career in medicine is not an inexpensive undertaking. It requires years of intense and difficult schooling, all the while racking up higher and higher bills from university expenses. With the passing of President Smith's new welfare and healthcare programs, the medical industry has seen a notable drop in profitability. Doctors are being paid less while having to care for an increased volume of newly insured patients. In short, it's becoming less worthwhile to pursue a career in medicine, as paying off med school debts becomes more and more difficult to rectify this issue for future doctors and nurses. The President has proposed a new federal program of medical scholarships that would greatly decrease financial strain on young men and women studying medicine. In addition, it would encourage more individuals to pursue a medical career in the first place, as the price tag becomes more approachable. Cool. Wow, we don't slash that. That's $23 billion. Holy crud, that's really bad. But people are still pleased. They're, everyone's still pleased, and the NPP is ready for anything, which is great. Uh, let's see. A lot of you guys actually recommend that we go as left wing as possible. Go left, 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 left. Um, we could try. I, I might. I kind of want to finish off this route here, actually, as much as possible with Shining City. I think that'd be a lot of fun. But I don't want to piss off people too much. You know, the not you guys, but like the constituents and the, the NPP all together, just because um, I think that would be good to not piss off everybody, at least for this campaign. Democrats. I hope. So. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Look at all the lights. Now that exist here. You can see in Charlotte, you can see in Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit, even Toronto. Look at that. That's kind of beautiful, actually, kind of, in its own sort of way. Look at that. You can kind of see, like, oh, that's kind of nice. Of course, we, I built too many radar stations here, but still. They have a radar station in Mesa Verde? Wow, look at that. But even Phoenix, look at all that. That's so cool. Oh, the Japanese are here, too. Well, that sucks. But even California is all pretty much lit up. That's really cool. Let's look at Europe, actually. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. I, I really want to drop the sub-mod. And look at the UK. Oh, that was such a good addition. Oh, look at that. That is... That's a little horrifying thing about how many lights they actually have down here and what they're doing down there. But whatever. Who cares right now? Oh, and it goes bye-bye. Well, that was fast. <laughs> Anyways, medical scholarships. That's alright. We're just trying to rapidly improve a poverty here as fast as possible, which is going to take forever. But, let's... I think I, I, think I read this one. Um, let's see... Well, America is not a nation that is amiable to change, especially in economic matters. Unfortunately for America, however, it is that there is no longer any choice. Some form of national welfare system must be introduced. While medical care programs that assist the elderly and overtly disadvantage in society will likely prove easy to pass through Congress. Well, for, the, for those who are similarly poor will not. At the time being, the best we can do is to grant economic security to the most low income of people in American society, the blind, disabled, and those who have, have to provide for others, like single mothers. In a most recent bill, a long but unfinished... <clears throat> uh, oh. Here we go. List. President Smith and their congressional allies have worked together to create the American Economic Security Act, which will guarantee financial aid for those who either cannot work or cannot find support their families, namely disabled and low-income families. It won't be a great step, and it likely won't have a great effect on rates of homelessness and poverty, but it'll be a start. It'll definitely be a start. Oh, I'm just trying to kill the budget here, aren't I? Oh, yes, I am. Here, have some IFVs. Come on, keep making these faster. Ah. My only hope is that poverty gets better. Let's get some pee-pee. Once we can strengthen pro-American sentiment. Subsidies or the state? We'll probably do want to do that one. Asking the industries the right to unionize. American workers are basically helpless against the strength of their employers, with no legally protected ability to unionize and call for more rights, pay, etc. For decades, blue-collar workers have been crying out for it, and for decades, employees have been fired for attempting to start or join a workers' union. This state of affairs cannot continue for the sake of all those Americans forced to work longer hours and poor conditions for the bare minimum in wages, and President Smith acknowledges such. Under the President's new economic reforms, the ability to unionize will no longer be a privilege for American workers, but an inextricable right. Previously, unionization was only protected at the state level. Well, with virtually no federal regulation in the matter, and a new legislation, the National Labor Board, uh, National Labor Relations Board, would be given the authority to protect American workers' unions across state lines, greatly increasing the strength of the employees against their potentially unfair employers. Cool. See that stuff? Battleship recruitment? Yes. Margaret Chase Smith says, We need battleships. 7.86 billion is still not too bad, though. Alright, and we can do anything else here actually yet? Seems like we got something else. 
Uh, let's see. Research. I think we're all done with research anyways. Everyone is still pleased. So no matter what happens, people are still pleased. Cool. Other comment says, okay, so the subgroup someone tried to tell, explain to me is that the center and the left wing is kind of one group. The right wing and southern wing is another group for like the far right. And then you have the fascists. Kind of. So. Cool. And we're still kind of together, which is good. Uh, someone says that we should play a country where the goal is to expand the debt all the way, as much debt as possible. Well, if you want to play America very incorrectly, we can definitely do that. Yeah, we could definitely, definitely do that as America if we really wanted to. Um, so, yeah, we could. Uh, founding the OSHA. Well, at this point, I don't care about debt anymore. For, or the deficit. For well over a century, American workers have struggled with their employers over what exactly constitutes safe working conditions. From underpaid railroad workers blasting holes into mountain sides in the late 19th century, to slightly less underpaid factory workers working on industrial equipment in the 20th century. American physical labor has never been quite safe. While many government laws over the past hundreds of years have tried to increase safety in the American workplace, there, these have been few and far between. However, due to extensive somewhat bipartisan campaigning and President Smith's cooperation with the CNPP, the standard may be ready to change the President and her allies in Congress have penned the occupation Safety and Health Act, or OSHA for short, that provide for the establishment of a new federal agency, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which will cooperate with workers' unions and health experts to determine which workplace practices are safe and which are not. In order to ensure business compliance, OSHA guidelines are not just advisory but mandatory, with violators finally severely fined overall. With support from both sides of the aisle and strict government-backed enforcement, the OSHA Act stands to improve the working conditions across the nation, which doesn't help us with poverty, which actually I don't really like then. Oh. We shouldn't do that one. Oh, baby, that's a lot. Yeah, that little bit of increase increases will be a little bit more. Oh man, that's a lot. <laughs> oh well. Deliberations. Running right behind me again, Secretary of Treasury Russell Long adjusted his reading glasses as he poured over the bill's final draft, cookie-cutter union reform, protections against sudden layoffs if your union isn't employed, heavier fines for employers who break the rules, not so clear explanations for what counts as employed, and cause for discontent interjected VP Spiro Agnew within the party's rank and files as of late. President Margaret Chase Smith nodded ab about as I expected, she said. Her attention turned to the situation room's other occupants. Jean? Secretary of State Gene Kirkpatrick grimaced. We shouldn't give in to the radicals any more than we already have, she muttered, arms crossed. That means the vote is now 1 1 minus Agnew. John? All I know is wrangling JCS, Madam President, and se said Secretary of Defense John Stannis shruggingly. I'd appreciate if that's all I'd ever need to know. Also, as expected, the Pentagon's neutrality unless her budget was on the line. That left the tiebreaker with the, within the President's circle. She locked her stare with the Vice President's. Ted? After a moment of silence dithering, Agnew sighed out. The bill will have its votes by first hearing. This will please arrive but bother progressives. We'll gain our votes by standing up against the party center. Oh no. Oh god. Well, okay, to be as best such as possible, we should make sure that we do a little bit for everybody so no one actually likes us. So for this one... If we do this, then... Oh, I want to get down here fast. Working overtime? We'll go a little more unified at New Balance of Power. Everybody will be... Start, will be will be start to to be satisfied about the state of employee rights. That's not quite right English, but whatever. Equal Employment Act. Satisfy the left wing and can let us start working on policy sooner, but Wallace and the citizens may object to favoring Harrington. Ooh. Gender equality. Deliberations. This will please the right. Ooh, you know what? If we're going to go down equal employment rights, I think it would be good if we say no to this one. Because I'm sure we can get the votes for this. But let's please the right now. But bother the progressives. Because with this, something like this, or even the traditionalist thing here, that's going to piss people off. So we want to make sure that we make sure everyone is fully pissed off at us, right? That's the way to win. Don't quote me on that. Uh, let's go over here and do my here. Who cares? Look at that. That's so nice. Look at all this. Oh, look at all that. Just a string of lights. That's so cool. Uh, let's take a look. They're... They're still pleased! And the fascists are ambivalent! Okay! Okay then! Well, and we just, we're doing the founding of OSHA, so. 
ask industries. Politics is a business of compromise. Well, President Smith needs to work with the CNPP and pass some pro-employee legislation. She's still a pro-business president and must also work together with large businesses if she expects her continued support. The president will meet with representatives from, some, from several large American-based businesses to discuss the contents of her new financial and economic reforms and how they will affect the economy. If any business finds a plan of hers to be unsatisfactory, the president will do her utmost to ensure that a compromise is found. All going well, this will just be to continue the report between the two and establish support for the president going forwards. Nice. If I don't cut that down, 41 billion. I mean, compared to like our modern times, that's nothing. Like that's, that's pretty much probably normal for us right now, actually. If not more. But, oh my goodness. Irrelevant, influential. I mean, just... I, I'm not sure what else to say. Expe expenses will rise? I mean... And it didn't rise by that much, whatever. Cool, and a new balance of power? Yeah, let everyone be satisfied about this part. The American workplace has seen a dramatic shift in the employer-employee power balance over the course of the past year or so. Mainly, the workers' unions have seen a significant decrease in their political power, with only a slight fall in the workplace power. President Smith's recent economic reforms have sought to rectify the long-standing issues with which the unions have pined over for decades. With many of their primary complaints addressed, thousands of formerly incensed workers are now leaving their unions, weakening them, due to, weakening them to a great degree, and pleasing both the president and her business allies. From here on out, uh, a union resurgence seems unlikely with both employers and employees left happy, which is good. It's good to have everyone, you know, as happy as possible, given the circumstances. Cool. I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should do this, like, several different times. Well, after trouble, yeah, that's not good. But, uh, we'll see what happens, just because we're doing, I think, pretty darn well. I'm, I'm focusing a lot on the left part of the focus tree here, but obviously we could probably, like, if we really wanted to break the party and destroy it. So we might do that sometime. We don't have that much support. We have literally no support from the left. Which kind of really sucks. But uh, we actually have quite a bit of support from the center. So, And there's a few Republicans and Democrats still here. So we'll see what happens. After a terrible meeting. They're supposed to help us, exclaimed President Smith. Her heels sidled past a broken glass jutting out of the Rose Garden scotch. Four steps behind her, Vice VP Agnew brushed off bits of fruit cocktail that stuck to his pine strip suit. <clears throat> I thought so too, ma'am. As it turned out, we're both wrong. The luncheon began with high hopes tacked it to it by everyone involved. Wall Street needed something to reassure stockholders, just as much as the president needed something to reassure the rightists that she wasn't just a brown nosing Harrington and his ilk. Pundits, insiders, and press corps, the three norns of the Beltway, had already trumpeted the conquest or consequent meeting as a reaffirmation of a symbi symbiotic relationship as old as the Civil War. So much for trusting precedent, thought the president grumbling. Lee, I th personally wouldn't call labor reform pa art a precedent. What did I say about listening to my thoughts, Ted? Agnew said nothing else as he moseyed through the meetings rooms or meetings littered fragments with wise decision. Growth will increase, which is good. But yeah, we're trying to be as centrist as possible for now, so we're going to go with this one. An equal employers, employment ask, rights. Oh, I apologize for my mispronunciations. It's late at night, so. The American job market is very strongly biased towards hiring white men, especially in higher earning professions like accounting, management, and others. Less fortunate groups, namely women and minorities, face great discrimination in the hiring process. In short, if a white woman, a black man, a white man all apply for the same job opening, the white man will be given the position nine times out of ten. President Smith recognizes that this issue is more than most politicians and more than most politicians, and as such, will campaign for legislation which prevent employment discrimination. To this end, the bill known as Equal Employment Rights Act will create a federal commission which will oversee employment equality throughout across the nation. Should a business be reported for potential dis discrimination or the commission suspects there is, the commission will be able to sue the offending business and punish them in a court of law. Well, based on what? Is it actual discrimination or, or is it not? Hmm. Anyways. Cool. Basic battleships. She wants the. She likes big ships, and we like big ships. <laughs> As someone put in the comments from yesterday, what was it? All the way with MCS, not LBJ. No, 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 no. MCS. Cool. What's that thing on? Which is kind of nice, actually. Two three billion. Not bad. The Postal Reorganization Act. As part of President Smith's program for restructuring of a bloated and stagnant federal government, the House NPP is currently running a bill for the restructuring of U.S. mail through a committee. The bill expected to be passed with limited bipartisan support in a few months' time should, if all goes to plan, cut off the current dead weight of the system by reorganizing the U.S. Post Office Department into an independent federal agency with a corporate structural structure, organizational structure, the U.S. Postal Service. Cabinet will no longer need to deal with micromanaging the postal network, ridding us of extra bureaucrats, and allowing the President 
inner circle to con concentrate on more pertinent matters of the MPP. Who knows? Maybe it'll even improve delivery times. Let's just hope that people will take it as well. Time to turn the U.S. mail into a lean, mean delivery machine. Can we actually vote for that? That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I don't think we can. Political landscape? No, I don't think we can. We close that out one too for now. Everyone still please? Fine with me? And the postmaster's woes. Uh-oh. Winton Red Blount squirmed in his oval office chair, all but trembling under the icy glare of President Smith. Red, I'll give you 30 seconds to explain why you want me to amend one of the most delicately negotiated bipartisan bills of the presidency. The Speaker will have your hide if you throw a wrench in this. Blount swallowed strainly. The, the unions, Madam President, they say the bill is supposed to be a fresh start for the U.S. mail, but they, as workers, are left out. My office received a letter from one Mr. Baylor. He describes the working conditions of the New York offices as stifling dungeons and cl clay. You're the Postmaster General, Red. Your job is to deal with these issues. Deal with it. How many unions? At least three have confirmed their opposition to the bill in its current state. We estimate the total may be five or six by the weekend. The NALC, the APWU, and the MPU, NPMU at present. The NRLCA, the UFPC, and the NPPN likely. The president leaned back in her chair trying to remember what the postmaster general told her about the many unions in previous cabinet meetings. Several of those are AFL, aren't they? We offered the AFL a 4% raise for the postal workers on the passage of the bill to get their support. Lucius Reds can't even keep their own members in line. Fine, what's the price? I spoke with James Rademacher of the NALC this morning, ma'am. He says the, ra the raise does not make up for years of income lost to inflation. They demand 15% plus collective bargaining rights and exemption from federal strike limitations, or they cannot guarantee their members will not act. What should I tell them, Madam President? 50% collective bargaining, no strikes. Wow! You lose a lot of political power. Even though it doesn't really matter at this point. 8% no strikes, compromise, and collective bargaining. Are these all the same? Is my surname Smith or Bukharina? Get out. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is weird. 8% no strikes, compromise. <sighs> That's a lot. I mean, yeah, I guess, you know, making it up for years of lost income due to inflation. Mm, this is a federal program, isn't it? So, I don't know. Huh. No strikes. Collective bargaining wouldn't be bad. Oh, we're going to get hit anyways. I'm going to do the middle one. I'm going to be as interested as possible. Cool. Oh, we're about to, oh the New York Wildcats. Uh, What is this? So... So, yes, I know the Japanese threat as well as anyone who served in their Navy. I know that many of you serve this country like me at sea or on land or in the air. And as many of you stay behind, keeping this country's communications running smoothly even as the world around us fell into darkness and our government failed us. Yeah, we all know if we do this, that that same government will call us unpatriotic, anarchists, and criminals. We're different from the opposition, they will say. We only care about making a country strong again. Why do you hate America? I say no. The words will not stop us because I know, you know, we all know that we are all patriots. And what we want is justice, liberty, and freedom for all. Just pay the liberty to organize as we want. The freedom to strike against unjust and inhumane working conditions. Yet as we speak here tonight, our so-called leader of the NALC is planning to surrender our rights to the president. Will we let him slink off to the White House like a scab in the morning, or will we force his hand to be a man and represent we, the people of U.S. males, free men? Think about this as you vote, gentlemen. Will Branch 36 surrender with the rest of the NALC, or will you, are you with me to victory? Vincent Sombrato allowed himself a grin at the roar of approval from the Union members as the speech trailed towards the end. It was obvious which way the Wildcat vote would go. Rademacher would have a strike whether he wanted it or not. Will you be a lousy scab or will you be a man? I'm looking at uh, night time, almost. Wait, it's one o'clock. Uh, huh. Okay, well, whatever. And we're maxed out of civvies here, so I kind of don't feel bad about doing this then. Pop. And we're still spending $4.7 That's not going to help us out here. Oh, boy. We're spending a lot on civvy stuff. Wow. We have a little... Why do we get money? Oh, we did that, but then we actually added to the debt. Okay. Going postal. President Smith massaged her forehead with a groan. Five days. The mail's been moving in New York for five days. Wall Street is stalling, and the strike keeps spreading. Tell me you can come to some sort of compromise, Rademacher. A Rademacher. The head of the National Association of Letter Carriers, a forgettable but determined-looking man, tightened his jaw in a fashion that betrayed frustration in his otherwise stoic visage. Our New York branch has gone totally wildcat. The leadership appears to have coalesced around half a dozen strike leaders, especially this fellow Sombrado who's been talking to the papers. They've allied themselves with Mo Biller of the Manhattan Bronx Postal Union, and his Biller's been putting in, pulling in the other unions and setting out the solidarity strikes. We already have over 600 sites out on strike, and I'm under heavy pressure to call up George Meany and call for a general strike. Terrified gazes were exchanged all along the table at the crisis meeting. The president noted the Secretary of Labor in particular looked like he was about to vomit. He decided not to think too long on what a general strike would mean for a presidency and party. Mr. Rademacher, this administration has consistently shown its willingness to respect the advice of the AFL. I assume I don't need to tell you that if your organization and you personally commit to something rash, 
The AFL will never again be a part of discussions on labor, negate, labor legislation. Give me a solution. The NALC is prepared to accept a compromise of a 12% pay increase, collective bargaining rights, and se sectional striking rights. If we could have Harrington go talk with the UFPC and get them to agree to this, I think we could convince the smaller unions to stop this before the situation gets out of control. Is no, there no other way? I don't know, when was the UPS founded? Or FedEx? Do they... Did they deliver in 1972? Hey, it's 1972, everyone! Hope you have a great year! We got strikes! Well, what's going to come of this? I really have no idea. Sh showing our hem. Bryce Harlow, the chief of staff, has presented three alternative actions. Plans regarding the unfolding postal crisis produced in conjunction with the political leaders of the NPP. All involve the National Guard, but their utilization varies. Despite our best efforts to keep the discussions with the union reps yesterday secret, Harrington and Walsh have both learned of this talks through their insiders and now demand we choose between the three options specifically. Needless to say, picking a plan backed by facts will strengthen it and upset their opponents, but the compromise plan is of, of dubious legality and can turn this into an even bigger scandal. Walls unsurprisingly opposes any concessions to the strikers and wants us to utilize the National Guard to handle critical mail services in the New York area and potentially elsewhere, while also presenting a solid line of defense for Manhattan should the strikes devolve into riots. Harrington, on the other hand, believes in Rademacher's plan of convincing the largest union of the protests, the United Federation of Postal Clerks, to agree to terms. The National Guard will be then deployed only a limited number to protect scabs and federal workers from the strikes. A potential compromise solution presented after the meeting by Nathan Wolkemer of the National Federation of Federal Employees and backed by the friendly union leaders Alan Whitney and John Granter aims to split the UFPC and thus leave Rademacher's NALC as clear leaders of the strike. The UFPC has a strong pro-MPP faction called the UNA Wing. Should the New York, stri or New York strikers attack the National Guard, the UNA Wing might split from the Union, causing them to crumble. Divide and conquer. Mobilize, mobilize the leftists, mobilize the UNA wing. I um, mean, that seems uh, pretty okay. They're, everyone's pleased, so we're just going to go straight with the uh, compromise solution. We should go okay. We got a lot of support on the right wing. We got quite a bit of support on the center and the Democrats and Republicans. Who cares? But we're going to try the center one. We'll do the best we can. Uh, and then we're going to do equal rights. Because we did the right wing earlier to benefit them. Now we're going to do the left wing and benefit them. So that'd be cool. And can let us start working on policy sooner. So that's cool. We're going to look a little worse in the southern states. But after that happens, we're going to go ahead and divert funding to the southern states and support southern politicians or whatever needs support. So, a hidden hand. Frank Bullard, sir, with the New York Times. Rumor has it that the Manhattan Bronx Postal Union has been increasingly taking over the organizing of the picket lines from the NALC. Is there some sort of split between the smaller and larger unions? I can assure that a solidarity as strong as ever. It's just a question of managing the... A sudden commotion interrupted the union leader. Hundreds of people rushed around the corner of 53rd. Yells and screams sounding from beyond the runners. Mo, one yelled, someone gets, some gets at the UFPC picket when it attacked the guard. They're coming through the batons tear gas, we gotta move. Mo cursed and bawled his fist. We're forming the corner of 51st and Park. Go, sorry, mister. It seems like we gotta talk some other time. Wait, Mr. Biller, please, ah, dropped. Buller was about to run after Biller when one of the runners slammed into him. Disoriented, he steadied himself against a car for a few seconds and suddenly realized the man who had crashed into him had lost his wallet. Looking down the street, he realized the man was taking off in a different direction than Biller. He had to make a decision. He had a Kodak. If he could catch up with Biller and snap some shots of the strike going to heck, he could be front page news tomorrow. But, excuse me, sir, your wallet? Screw it. If it bleeds, it leads. Uh, hmm. This doesn't seem very good. If you have... Ooh... Because news can get out of hand to promote a particular side, depending on the context and framing of things. If it bleeds, it leads. Excuse me, sir, your wallet. Uh, just do the wallet. I, I don't know. I'm trying to balance out things here to the best of our abilities. Seems like I'm just really going to, like I said earlier, just piss everyone else off. And no one likes that. You can suppress the Yakiites, but it doesn't matter. A feds and reds. The president will not take your, the yeah. The president will not take your questions. Okay, you there with the hat. Miller from ABC Radio News, Madam President, last Friday a piece in the New York Times where Frank Bowler revealed the badge and ID of an FBI agent recovered the scene of the Midtown riots of Manhattan last week. This in turn led to the Washington Post expose on mo on morning. Monday, alleging a wholesale infiltration of the protest movement on the direction of the White House in an attempt to provoke violence in the crowd. Do you have any comment on this or the credibility of the White House staff or the Post claims as their source? I do not have a habit of commenting on wild speculation and rumor, rumor mongering. 
But rest assured that my administration has no wish to see violence escalate in American cities, whoever this so-called whistleblower is. I assure you, he or she will be soon out of a job for spreading such malicious lies. Next question. Bob Carlowitz, The Inquirer. Is it true that George Meany called your office yesterday and threatened a general strike? I did talk to Mr. Uni on the phone yesterday, yes, but I only expressed a desire of the White House to come to an amicable solution that ensures good pay and rights for the postal workers. I have the full and unequivocal support of all sections of my party on this issue, even with our Southern members stating that our mailmen deserve a raise for servicing in potentially dangerous low-income neighborhoods, as they like to put it. <laughs> oh, this is a peace offering, not a surrender. Next question. So we want to help the left here. Help and pass this, or if we have to pass anything. I don't think it's going to pass anything. That'd be cool if this was the actual bill, but working overtime? We'll go grow a little more unified. Actually, where are we at with, with the, uh... Russell 29.1! That's actually really good. I want to save this, then. Let's save this, because this could be useful if we want to split the party a little bit more, but subsidies or the state. There are two principal ways that the government may implement its planned health care and welfare reforms. Insurance subsidies or state-provided health insurance. And the former, preferred by the President and the most conservatives in Congress, the U.S. government would heavily subsidize insurance companies across America to keep medical expenses for the individual relatively low. This option is not without its downsides, however. These insurance companies are still businesses, and thus are primarily for profit, so there will be still a non-insignificant price tag. And a state provided a program supported mainly by the CMPP and progressive elements of Congress. The government itself would be the primary care provider, with tax income serving as the payment method. This system would be almost completely eliminate the cost of medical care for the patient. However, it would also cost significantly more, and lead to a massive increase in federal spending. It also runs the risk of angering private insurance companies, who may not take kindly to free state-sponsored or state-provided health care. Oh boy. Health care talks in my TNO mod? Ah, oh, makes sense. Presidential elections has season has begun. Oh god no. Well, if you want to read about this, please guard ahead. So oh boy. And who are we gonna do? We're gonna go help elect the NPP. Hopefully we didn't piss off too many people yet. Oh crud. Um leaning towards MPP. Leaning towards MPP, very good. MPP what's happened to the deep south? They're going R D Mississippi and Louisiana? Ooh, baby. Uh, let's see, Tort Tilting, so Deep South so far, it looks like, Deep South, or the Southwest, like we've said in the last episode, Deep South or Southwest, Deep South, Southwest, the Great Plains. Um, hmm. Uh, I guess we'll go Deep South, let's go Deep South. Oh, boy. And the right is still satisfied, and the fascist wing is m marginalized. My pronunciations are just so bad right now, oh my goodness. Subsidize or the state. So, basically, we started off with the, the right for the founding of OSHA. Over the equal employment rights, we went with the left. So, we have this one. We could piss people off by going right or left. So, do we liberalize the healthcare industry? Limit the costs. A sale for healthier America. Ooh. The right right now is a little... They're, they're pleased. But the right wing is satisfied. Southern wing is pleased. The right is satisfied, so we maybe want to piss off the left and help out the right for now. We'll see. We'll see. But limit the costs. In spite of a recent slow of progressive and expensive reforms, President Sm St Smith still holds to her core conservative values. These reforms will likely be extremely helpful to the poor of the nation, but there's still quite a bit of fat that remains to be trimmed in the budgeting department. Consequently, the President has chosen several low-priority, high-expense parts of the bills to be amended. With additional legislation that will cut back on spending, these cost-limiting bills will unfortunately but unavoidably, unavoidably weaken the effect that the new welfare, national welfare system will have on poverty. As a result, the President can anticipate having a harder time passing them through Congress, as many progressive congressmen will believe them too austere and harmful. Oh boy. What else did we have here? Conclusion of the Battle for Russia minus 290, 280 days? What the heck is that? Um, that should have already been gone a while ago, but whatever. There you go, choppers. Because that's all we have left for military. <laughs> um, we could probably help them out a little bit more. Right, maybe? Talk to right leaders? Publicly support the right? Outside the South. A pretty conservative turnout. Uh, we could probably do that. Never mind. 29.5? Nice! Regarding funding, as it is, spoke Secretary Long as he shuffled through the bill's draft. The proposal assumes we, and by we I mean Congress and the White House, will short of the majority of the program's expenses. Gao published the 10-year cost projections for it around a week prior. How much, said President Smith. The Secretary pursed his lips for a moment longer before responding with a conservative estimate. Hundreds of billions. 
Like a choir, the cabinet room sucked sharp breaths in tandem. Silence reigned until the vice president's Agnew chimed in with a suggestion. Suppose we let the states fund a proportion of it themselves. Then the costs go down considerably, getting them on board is another problem entirely. Long trailed off, Smith filled in the gaps herself, one gap shaped like the American South in particular, still added expenses for their state governments, with much more leeway on what to spend, how much to spend, and who would and who they should spend on. The federal government would like it, would have no choice in the latter. With the specter of Wallace looming over their heads, Margaret J. Smith decided, push it through with this version, satisfy the left wing, and can let us start working on policy sooner, but Wallace and Southers may object to us favor Harrington, or send it back to the committee. This will satisfy the right wing of the party, but can start letting us work on policy sooner. Oh, ooh. I mean, these guys are pissed off, but we just just please them. We like pleasing the right wing for now. Um, honestly, it really doesn't matter. So, where are we at with poverty? Two? We probably honestly won't get it done. So, if we go whatever direction we go, that just means we have to go the other direction next time. So, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Let's go push it through with this version. Let's push it through. And let's take a look. Did anything happen? They're both pleased. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, why not? Jesus Christ! No, 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 that's for the next generation to figure out. Not, not, not us. But liberal as a healthcare industry. The in healthcare industry is a balance of priorities between healthcare and profit. One cannot be placed over the other without jeopardizing both. The new welfare reforms that President Smith and her congressional allies have enacted have, in general, disrupted this balance in much of the industry. Companies are spending more on care and profit profiting less, leading to financial struggles. To remedy this problem, the President has proposed that many of the old taxes and regulations upon the medical sector be repealed. As much of the healthcare industry is now directly tied to the government and federal subsidies. These taxes and regulations serve little purpose beyond the small amount of tax income they provide. Cool. And I think we did want to do the Southwest anyway, so just, I'm not going to look. Let's do that one. So currently, my goal for this is at least to maintain what we have. We have 27 centers. I would like to increase the center. And the far right gets a little more influence, whatever. Uh, I guess you could say a goal is just to de demolish the Republicans, demolish the Democrats. And if we can get the same amount of center senators, I think that'd be okay. As you can tell, I'm not a big fan of the Republicans or Democrats. Anyways, not to get too political here. So next up, we got to support the right because we just went with the stuff about just having a full federal plan with the state and the state provided. Oh, that's be, be primary. The government is going to be the primary care provider with this one, which is fine. Which is very weird that and this is. I don't know how much the devs have actually worked in market chasing. Maybe a whole lot. I'm not really sure. It's just that they're significant, but everyone's still pleased with everything that we've done so far. So, I, I'm not really sure what to say. <laughs> Except that's a big number. But it, it could get definitely bigger. But at least we're still growing the economy. That's good. Polls are updated. Eh, I don't care about the polls. After this, a safer, healthier America. But after we talk about battleships, because we like our ships. Oh, baby boy. The big ships make us go woo. A safer, healthier America. Americans are now subject to some of the very best government-provided health care Medicare in the world, and it is all thanks to President Margaret Chase Smith and the CMPP. Their collective, indomitable desire to help the average American have truly shifted the nation's health care system into something remarkable, and through their various legislative and executive actions, most citizens of the U.S. are able to live long, prosperous lives with little in the way of medical bills to ail them. With only a few relatively inconsequential bills left to celebrate, or implement, I mean, the President can declare her desire for American health care and welfare fulfilled. And that Americans can now continue in the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Celebration for the USPS. Today, the Postal Reorganization Act passed the Senate to celebrations of post offices across the country. While it seems a capitulation by the government and negotiated in conjunction with the AFL and NACL, the bill pro promises postal workers a 15% raise in collective bargaining and striking rights once U.S. mail transitions to the new U.S. Postal Service. A new national postal union, the APWU, will form to represent the employees of the USPS. In return, the AFL made the APWU to agree to 10 years without strikes or demands for further raises, as well as limiting such strikes to five days a week uh, and allowing critical government services to use a small number of scabs during the strikes in the interest of national security. In an attempt to pacify the Dixies during the 10-year period, the state postal services will be allowed to self-regulate postal employment and implicit exemption from civil rights legislation regarding racial discrimination and hiring. <laughs> Let's hope the newspapers don't go over this bill with a fine comb. Oh, boy. Oh, I love the South. That's funny stuff. Ah, you gotta love it. Or, or really not, but, you know, whatever. Got... Oh... Oh, if you want to read about the Ford Mustang 2 thing, please go ahead. This happens every campaign if you get far enough in this campaign. Don't tell me that the 
a libertarian socialist, Siberian free territory is going to win in Russia here. I've never seen them win. I'm pretty sure. I might have seen them once, maybe. But I'm pretty sure I've never seen them win ever. Have you guys, in your campaigns, when you play Tino, have you seen the Siberian Free Territory win? I don't think they usually win. Usually they get killed off pretty early in my, in my games, I think. I'm pretty sure they get killed off. Let's do the Upper South next. But I'm pretty sure they always die. What the heck happened here? 90,000? Zero? One division! Holy crap! Holy smoky daddies! A safe or healthier America. I guess I should have read the thing at the very beginning of the episode then. Oh man. Because that, that's that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. But let's go and do working overtime since we want to get down to that final one. The American economy is doing better than it has in years due to no small part to President Smith and her unprecedented economic program. Unemployment is at its lowest since World War II. The stock market has risen an average of three points since the President's inauguration. The GDP per capita has on average risen and America has seen the amount of women and minorities in high paying jobs at all time high. Overall, President Smith's economic reforms have proven to be a resounding success. And the time has come to finally pass the last few pieces of relatively inconsequential legislation to finish them off. And goes a little more unified. Even though, where are we at for unification? This, this doesn't seem right. Like, I mean, I know we didn't do too many things that are too radical, really. But, still. 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 And we can do stuff about... We can do stuff over there. Oh, I guess with the Quiet Revolution, we did go left. We can do this one, too. Yeah, actually... Uh, well, maybe not. We'll see what we can do with the right. If we can please the right just a little bit, then we'll be okay. Cool. Guys, guys, I hired you to do have a good campaign, not a crappy campaign. And how are we doing out down? Oh, hello. Uh, we're still pretty good. Uh, the Rockies. We all do Rockies. Rockies next. Cool. We only have minus 49% war support. I don't know why. We only had terrible African mandates, that's all. Military austerity? I mean, that really does nothing. 0.02 billion. Yeah, that's like nothing. There you go. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, can we suppress the Republican and Democratic parties? I guess that's worth keeping this open then. <gasps> Yay, we can! <sighs> cool. After working overtime, it's Shining City. America is now not only a powerful nation, but one that is a joy to live in. Americans no longer worry about the potential medical accidents that may drive them into an inescapable pit of debt. They no longer worry about not being able to feed their low-income families. Minorities no longer worry about being denied job opportunities due to their race, gender, religion, or another trait. Sometimes, unless you're a postal worker, maybe in the South. America has reclaimed its place as a shining city across the sea. A city upon a hill where one can not only find opportunity, but health and happiness. With the passing of the president's final set of welfare reforms, the U.S. finds it has reclaimed the founder's vision for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we get a ray of hope. More political power, recruitable population factor, stability, war support, but nothing about the GDP, which makes sense, but still. <gasps> we can suppress the Democrats, too? Aw, oh, yeah. Oh, there's a toss-up in the Deep South. Oh, that is not good. It's pointing towards NPP, but oh, we got, we're going to do Deep South next. We're going Deep South this thing. Deep South it, baby. After this, well, anything that for the right... Oh, Mountain Infantry, that's fine. Cool. And Shining City. Expand the JPL. Nice. Aerospace is the far frontier of the mechanical engineering disciplines, but for every single new jet or rocket that inspires millions of Americans, there are dozens of failed prototypes and hundreds of proof of concepts that never see the light of day. It is by no means a clean, predictable, or cheap business, and the future development of American air and space science might be better served by ensuring that engineers and project managers have the space and funding needed to pursue their dreams by expanding the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Cool. And right now, how much? if we don't cut civilian spending, how much? how bad is it? Oh, I wonder what that was so lucky. That's actually not bad. Thirty-seven billion is a lot better than I thought it would be. That's a lot more manageable. That's a lot more manageable. Wow. And the R D primaries. Um, I'm pretty sure I've already read this one before. So if you like to read this, please go ahead. Between McNamara and McGovern, who is more unelectable? I thought McNamara was under our administration. But I guess that was with uh, um. Bennett when I play as Bennett to get to here. I want to say McNamara just because he's probably uh, sees business efficiency as a moderate Democrat, a staunchly liberal Republican. Acid, amnesty, and abortions. 
Okay, yeah, actually, you know what? Let's go with McGovern. Divisive across the nation. Yeah. I don't know, McNamara, he's, 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 from my understanding of him, he's a little bit less cool, I guess you could say, just because he's all about numbers and stuff. So, I'm like, he's probably not... Does he have a personality? He might. His personality is numbers. Numbers, 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 and figuring out how the numbers can be best managed and manipulated to get a certain outcome. But McGovern, that, that, that seems like kind of like a wild... Uh, platform to go on. Well, the right is satisfied. And others just please. Over our 30. Wow. Polls are updated. And we're doing the deep south, right? Yep. Come on, deep south it. And it's still July 14th. We got time for this baby. Come on. Oh, can we do anything else here? Yeah, deep south, deep south. Look at them pretty lights. Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina. There's a lot of stuff. Cool. So I'm sorry if you couldn't hear that, but it, it's just some sort of song. Russian reunification. By the anarchist spirit, I mean that deeply human sentiment which aims for the good of all, freedom and justice for all, and solidarity and love amongst the people. I'm looking down here. You can actually see the land auction, which is kind of cool. Artillery, they did not do anything on artillery. And the progressive four more years. Cool. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. These guys did some armor, some support, a lot of infantry. Wild. Absolutely wild. But a small party. After we do this. Ah, uh, there you go. President Smith checked the wall clock. 6.59, it said. Twirling the lit cigar between her fingers, she counted down to seven. He should be about right here. A door swiveled open just behind her. She grinned, turning around to greet her guest. Just in time, Ted, the president said. Vice President Agnew carried with him a champagne bottle, half submerged in a bucket of ice. With his free hand, he pulled out the bottle and presented its ornate cover. Moet Imperial, he said, a faint hint of regret coloring his faux French accent. Mr. Holler recommended taking one from our dwindling French reserves. She set aside her cigar and ashtray besides which two thin flutes sat atop a small round pan. A pop and a fizzle later and the bottle was open. Agnew poured just enough to fill exactly three quarters of either glass with a sparkling amber liquid. He gingerly lifted one flute, nodding at the president. I suppose here's when you deliver a heartfelt, heartfelt speech to our recent successes. Smith rolled her eyes that had booked I would have booked a reservation on the old Abbott if I had more than a toast in mind for tonight. She clinked her glass against the vice president's. To an economy in the up and up, and a party more united than ever it's been before. Agnes lips quirked up, upward in a ghostly smile. Then congratulations are in order, Madam President, to sound health and good government. The two emptied the prices bottle by quarter to eight. Wow, look at that. We get more political power. Poverty rate gets, improves a little bit more. The MPP grows more unified, and we get more stability. Man, it, MCS is a little too easy to play. Or if you try to go centrist, that's not too bad. I guess 30 here is probably the most we can do. So that's good to know. 30 is the most we can do. Uh, let's grab some of this, because we can. Because te technology doesn't really mean too much to me. Now. And the fascists are displeased. Can we support, or can we increase the support from the fascists? <laughs> but they're all pleased still. Like, I mean, usually I don't like too much of a challenge. But even right now, like, I don't know. I don't know. That'd be cool if there was a sub-mod for MCS. Like, really go extremely radical options or something like that? I don't know. Something where you could just really kill the country. Of course, then again, I made sure that we could at least get elected. And we're trying to really centrist path, so. Or at least try as, as centrist as possible. Legacy of LeMay? Why not? The military doctrine of mass strategic bombing laid out by retired Air Force General Curtis LeMay has guided the development of the Air Force's arsenal ever since the end of World War II. Two, with primary importance placed the ability of bombers to travel extreme distances to deliver a massive payload of conventional weapons or a nuclear bomb over enemy military and population centers. However, the development of guided missile technology and faster, higher altitude jet interceptors have put the existing fleet of B-52 stratofortresses in grave danger of being shot out of the sky before fulfilling their mission. It's time for a new generation of bomber aircraft to pick up LeMay's baton, a generation of faster, higher altitude, and less, detectical, less detectable bombers. Kaboom, kaboom. If only I could speak correctly right now. My apologies. Oh, my goodness. That's why recording when a little tired doesn't always work out. Oh, well. I want to be more... Oh, god dang it. Guys, we did it in the Rockies for a reason. Or the upper... Or the deep south. <sighs> We're going back to the Rockies. Legacy of LeMay. Cool. All right, the business of space flight. Oh, yes. These tax cuts will slightly reduce the revenues. Whatever. The cost and complexity of sending rockets and people into space repeatedly is literally astronomical. An entire industry has emerged in order to service the needs of our space programs. And with some of the best and brightest minds of America working in their offices and design floors. Uh, we can harness the power of private industry to make greater efforts, offering tax incentives for the continued excellence in supporting our space exploration programs. What's the point of even doing this if the, if the 
our supporters and c campaigning is just going to end in failure. God, I wish we could get rid of the oil crisis. Someday it won't be here anymore, but the personal cost modifier is just, oh my goodness. Annual GDP growth factor minus 25% proportional GDP cost. That just kills us. Oh my goodness. Oh. Construction speed's bad too, and consumer goods. But this political power gain is 0%. That's not bad. Ride out the storm and pray for a miracle? We can start praying, but I'm not sure what really much is going to happen. Opera and AJ fiction, huh? I'll protect American business interests? We could do that, I guess, if we really wanted to, but nah. Eh, not really much is here. Cool. Yeah, the Rockies of the Deep South again. It's just so bad. And the business of space flight. Cool. And then, lessons. Uh, no, let's do upgrade the Minutemen. The early models of ballistic missiles were comparatively crude instruments, comparatively uh, inaccurate compared to the bombers and vulnerable to first strike due to their reliance on liquid fuels. Now, however, the success of the initial Minutemen solid fuel missile series and the success of imp improvements in targeting software, the American ballistic missile program is well established as a critical component of the nuclear defense. Even so, our enemies prepare new countermeasures to which we respond with new capabilities. So this is the proposed mechanism by which we can include multiple missile warheads independently targeted into a single missile. Jesus Christ, what did I just say, my campaigners? What the heck are you doing? <laughs> my God. It's like the game is saying, we don't want you to do too well. But questions from the press. Secretary of Defense Stannis felt the day's stress roll off of him as he wrapped up his weekly press conference. It had been a good day as things go with the Pentagon. Their day's meetings have been relatively light. Maybe there'd be time to... Mr. Secretary, reporter and the press, Scarum, raised their hand high, holding a newspaper high to literally rise above their peers. Stennis waved off his aides. Mr. Secretary, do you have any comment about your shareholdings in Linton Industries at Ingall Shipbuilding? The recently announced plans to expand Navy Shipbuilding? It was a poorly worded question, but the implications were unmistakable. The raucous journalist pool had fallen dead silent while Stennis blinked twice in surprise. I don't know what you mean to imply by that, but I can assure that my personal business interest follows all ethical disclosure requirements. I have no further comments, Stennis scowled and left the journalist to their feeding frenzy. As he walked back to his office, he found himself coming back to that question. It was a clumsy smear. The stock holdings were disclosed, so it shouldn't have been a question at all, really. But nobody in Washington wanted digging for that information unless they were trying to run a bigger hit piece. Which raised the question, what more had they found? Let them take their best shot. Do we have corruption here in the government? Probably. The Godfather releases. If you'd like to read about that, please go ahead. This happens every time we play as America. Ave Maria Gratia Plena. I don't know any Italian at all. You're not even part Italian, but yeah, whatever. Maybe that'd be cool to learn someday. How to become Italian, or more importantly, how to speak Italian. But then again, why would I ever use that? Cool. Who's the reactor? Nice. Doing this basically does nothing, but hey, it makes us feel good a little bit. Upgrade the Minutemen. Aw, oh, yeah. Ready for anything would be really cool. Grow even more unified. Nice. But I want to do this one just so we can improve our nuclear stockpile. Oh, there we go. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do this campaign. We keep hurting our efforts down here. <laughs> Why? I'm like, it's just, you might as well not even campaign then. You might as well not. And we're almost ready for election season, but lessons for Midway. The bitter lessons of our defeat in the Pacific campaign, the loss of strategic oil reserves at Pearl Harbor, to the tactical defeat at Midway, and the disastrous overconcentration of forces at Iwo Jima have had obsessively dissected since the end of the war. The, challenge, the changes in strategic geographies also impose new requirements on American grand strategy. The loss of Hawaii, all of America's Pacific territories, and the isolation of Australia and the newfound industrial strength of the sphere all pose major obstacles that must be accounted for in our new strategy. Actually, can we still get back Hawaii? That's a good question to ask. And my apologies about that sound, that was Discord. God dang, I need to mute that again. Yeah, we can still get Hawaii back. So, even if we get a second term and we complete literally all our focus down here, we will get Hawaii back. We will. I wonder how far we can push our support. We'll go all the way to 1977 then and elect whoever's... Can we elect anybody in that time? I have no idea. Alright, shh, everyone be quiet. I can't hear the TV. Oh boy, oh boy. Here's the moment of truth. Oh boy. Actually... How many electoral votes is... Oh my gosh! Look at that! For the popular vote. 26 million for the RDs. 50 million for the NPP. Electoral College. The NPP won every single electoral vote. Holy crap! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! Oh, we got three more center. We have 30... Oh my god. Holy crap. This is the best I've ever done for the NPP. President Smith, I... We got every single house vote. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. There's only five Republicans, 13 Democrats, 30 center MPPs, 50 far right. Oh my gosh. That's so good. 
How? That's I don't know. Maybe I'm just overly excited at like this these numbers. But oh my goodness. That's so awesome. It sucks for the opposition, but who cares? Don't let them retire the army. The machines do not fight wars, men do. They they are the army men who fought fascism to the death over two decades ago and the army men today defending freedom in the burning savannas for South Africa. Every American knows of sacrifices and suffering endured by their sons and husbands in uniform. They deserve better than the scorn of penny pinchers who will never en endure or suffer napalm bombs or the terror of waking in a pool of their fellow soldiers' blood. Their throats slipped by a machete in, the na in a night raid, all for the noble and necessary cause of defending liberty. Secretary Sanders threw the magazine aside in a rage. The offending article was no simple editorial. It carried the signature of Lieutenant General Frederick Whalen. A veteran of the South African war and still on active duty. He expected the bureaucratic pushback and no politician worth their salt was surprised by dirty tricks and slander, but this? This is insubordination or as close as one could get to it in the army without directly disobeying orders. I will court-martial that son of a gun, I swear to God, Stennis fumed, reaching out for his desk phone. If the army was going to do everything they could to push back against a civilian chain of command, then Stennis would make sure they reap their consequences. They started it and subsidized Newport News. The obvious next question after deciding to expand the Navy is, where will these new ships be built? Exactly. And the question is laden with political meaning. Actually, that means we, if we support the right there, then that would kind of benefit us as well as them. Cool. All right, not bad. Not bad. You know what? Uh, yeah, that's not too bad. Cool. Oh, do we have something we can upgrade here? Can't put it into here. Thank you very much. That's still not too bad. I mean, we could construction that wouldn't do anything. And we can't build any more civvies, so we're kind of maxed out on what we can do, which really sucks. We're building anti-aircraft. I'm not sure when anyone's going to bomb us, but you never know. All right, cool. The polls are updated. Cool. Subsidize Newport News. Followed up with what? It's over. Hell to the chief, whoever it may be. Rid of the boomers. Commission the carriers? Sure, why not? Though the U.S. Navy shift to a carrier-based naval warfare is already underway during the Pacific War, the loss of Hawaii and the U.S. possessions in the Pacific have made the primacy of the aircraft carrier unquestionable. The only means by which the Navy will still have air support is bring, by bringing the aircraft to the fight. And if America is to have enough carriers to fight the Japanese, the Germans, and to maintain a sensible maintenance and rating the schedule, we'll need a dozen or more of the steel behemoths. Nice. Alright, you want Navy stuff? We'll go with Navy stuff. Nuclear reactors for battleships. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> I mean, marginalize, displease, irrelevant, and please. Can I please the Yaquiites? I think that'd be fun. We can't strengthen pro-American sentiment. All right, then. And we'll do that one. And rule the waves. Non-combat only. Military systems with non-combat only. Duck and cover. The center and left are dissatisfied as they are more passive. Okay, so that's kind of okay. So that means we'll push. We displease the right last time. Doing this will make us balance, though. Red, white, and blue water. Oh, the OFN grows a little more unified, which is not too bad either. So, Cool. Anything else? Uh, talk to centrist leaders? Eh. Wow, conclusion of the battle for Russia is dealt minus 592 days. Oh, baby boy. Air, sea, and land? Uh, pride of our fleet. The West Coast will appreciate this. The triad complete. The people of the U.S. can rest easy knowing their enemies will think twice before starting a nuclear war. Ready the boomers. Pentagon strategists have argued for decades that despite America's oceanic isolation from Germany and Japan reliance on a purely air and land-based nuclear deterrent, deterrent will not guarantee the credibility of America's nuclear deterrent. <clears throat> Bombers can be intercepted, silos must be defended against infiltration, and can be pre-targeted in surprise strike. Recent advancements in missile technology have raised the possibility that larger subs could play a carrier could carry a substantial payload of nuclear weapons, firing them from the safety of international waters during or after an initial ex nuclear exchange. We want Maggie Smith. It doesn't matter who she's with, we want Maggie Smith. We read a sign somewhere far back among the mass of humanity standing along the Na National Mall. They were silent, awaiting the words of the president. Just sworn in for the second time, Maggie herself darted her eyes between all the faces staring back at her, and their tens and thousands. She shuffled her speech papers. To a few of us here today, this is a solemn and awesome moment, and yet, in the tides of American history, is a regular occurrence. The places in which I stand in and in which the nation stands are in many ways the same as they were four years ago. In many ways, they're different. Four years ago, I spoke to you furiously, admonishing the injustice done to the U.S. and how we might recover from a weakened state. Today, I must more give more sobering words, sobering words, for the revival of the nation is a task is not easily undertaken. Let us resolve that we may build a society in which in white, black, rich and poor, young and old may walk together hand in hand for a better future today. We utter no prayer more fervently than the ancient prayer for peace on earth. However, history has shown that peace does not come simply because we wish it to. The U.S. of America must be ever vigilant in the face of tyranny. We shall embrace Lady Liberty and defend her so that 
that she may too defend us. She has strength in her darker star, and with classic American optimism, hope, and strength, we shall prevail through the turbulent storms of change our world is currently experiencing. God bless us all. May God bless America. Hail to the chief. Nice. And we get three events here, huh? Oh, boy, that seems like, like a lot. But cool, no matter what. We still, even cutting down civilian spending, we still have 1,300 and a half PP. But happy 1973, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. And military austerity, we can cut that down and kind of read one more focus before we end the episode. Look at that. It's not, oh my god, 91.19. Ooh, baby, that's a lot. But anyway, sea, land, and air, and eyes in the sky. The try complete. We'll do that one. With incredible air and land based deterrent and plans to introduce a sub base equivalent in the Navy, we now have three distinct systems by which we can deliver nuclear destruction to our enemies. If the bombers don't get through, then our missiles will pierce the enemy skies. If the missiles fly off target, then our subs will be close enough to ensure a hit. It will take far too much effort for the Germans or Japanese to be able to destroy all of our means of nuclear warfare, ensuring the eternal efficacy of America's nuclear deterrent. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll continue with Maggie Smith as president. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.